started getting quite lively, um, and I was having to spill a fucking hell. And it's chilly night. Got the uh, ready cooked rice. I'm just gonna throw that in there when this gets a bit warmer, and then um, and then uh, smash it. So I've just eaten my um, my dinner, and I'm just admiring the East Coast panorama from uh, my um, spray hood. <laughs> It's uh, not the calmest of moorings, this at um, Marconi Sailing Club, but that's not its fault. It's the uh, <laughs> it's the northeasterly that's coming straight into the river. I was um, hoping to uh, get away from it <clears throat> by going further up to um, Lawlands Creek and and getting as far up that as possible. Um, but while I was about halfway up, um, I, I ran aground and ran out of water which I was quite surprised on because I thought well it's only about two and a half hours after high water but it is spring so um, one thing I noticed from the tide curve is just how quickly the um, the water depth um, reduces uh, after high water uh, <coughs> so um, I turned around and came back out and um, I'm, uh, I'm moored uh, within the sort of um, Marconi Sailing Club sort of yacht pack, if you like. We're sort of all um, moored up along this this um, this beach. Uh, mooring at Marconi Sailing Club. Um, not too bad in the end last night. It, it actually calmed down uh, quite a lot. I'm not sure whether it was just earlier on the wind had picked up in the right direction, but it has shifted round to the north slightly. So it's yeah, the, the, the swell from the wind um, wasn't as bad. So uh, we just had a bit of like tidal knock, and that was about it really. Um, yeah, now we're heading. Um, Heading uh, down river towards uh, uh, the river Toll, uh, and then I'll head up there and uh, drop anchor until uh, sort of approaching high water, and then start to make make my way back round to um, Ipswich. So just uh, just this is uh, an interesting ship. Uh, the Ross Revenge, um, originally a fishing vessel, uh, first commissioned I think 60s. Uh, there's a film all about the um, the pirate radio station that it ended up becoming. Um, yeah, Radio Caroline. <coughs> um, ran aground on the Goodwin Sands, I think, uh, before sort of being decommissioned I suppose. Um, interestingly I found out that this ran on DC power all the way up to the point when it became a radio station um, and then it, it needed an AC conversion so but um, yeah it was boarded by Dutch mercenaries and all sorts There's all sorts of uh, stories on on the Ross Revenge and uh, there's a film on Netflix as well. So it's eight o'clock. Um, <clears throat> just approaching the. Uh, oh. Started to approach the cold starboard can, um, just avoiding some of the shoals which are like just off to our port side. 
but we will be heading up that direction for a short while. We've done really well um, just getting down the river. Uh, the tide is about to turn, so um, yeah, it's timed that quite well and uh, start to get a bit of flood just pushing us up the Colm Bar as well, or the Colm River as well. Uh, so yeah, the wind is, the wind is still so quite northerly, um, which is quite nice, and it's lovely and warm. It's a real nice sort of heat coming off the land, even at this time of day. So yeah, just a little bit of uh, Genoa just helping us along. The uh, sort of single-handed anchor uh, set up. A uh, bit of preparation first. You don't want to be doing or preparing your anchor right where you need to anchor because. Uh, yeah, especially at low tide, you haven't got much room to play with, so best to just kind of sort this out now. What I've done, just disconnected the anchor from its hold and then flailed it out roughly about in metre length. Well, I think these are just over a metre, uh, roughly about a 10, there's 10 metre marker there. I do need to sort of sort out the markers a little bit better, but uh, to start with, just get 10 metres out and then you can you can sort of put more scope out later on. Um, I don't really have the deck space for lots of um, sort of flail out if you like, so uh, I'll keep it at 10 meters. And then, uh, yeah, that'll get you sorted for most places on the east coast. Um, uh, but look to anchor in approximately um, three meters, um, somewhere up the cold, not too far up. I don't want to go too far up, it just means I have to come all the way out again later on today, so uh, yeah, about three metres and then you can put another four metres on top for uh, for the tide. Uh, so if, you, if you're going to see seven metres of depth, you want about 21 metres of chain. Um, let's just sort you out. Obviously the more chain the better, if you're not sure, just put the whole lot out. Uh, I think I've got 30 metres. Um, down in that locker. I might not bother putting all of it out because I'm not staying for very long. I'm only staying for about six hours so I might just put about sort of 10 or 15 meters out and then uh, obviously I'm on board so I can monitor it through the day. So. Something about 2.6 meters and uh, out of the channel now so I'm going to drop the hook and uh, let the tide do the rest. So that's the uh, that's the anchor down. Yeah, we've got about 15 meters out of the net. Um, just ran her in reverse a little bit, just to bed in. It drops in about 2.6 meters. So we can put probably another four or five meters on top of that for the tide. So when we come away from here later on. Be coming out of about seven and a half, eight meters, something like that. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I'm expecting Pie Fleet Creek and sort of further up to be quite busy. So I've just come outside the channel and um, and just come in here. Got a bit of protection there from some of the that high bank. Um, I think the wind is actually coming from kind of over the top of the Sea see anyway. So. But yeah, um, so now we're settled. Um, just plot a position, make sure we're not beside the drift. You can use plenty of landmarks to use. We've got this can over here. Um, there's a few other bits and pieces we can use. Um, we've got the wind, um, the turbines there, um, and just the house. You can just gauge that. Just make sure that that doesn't start shifting against one another. Um, you got the starboard can there against the uh, against the sort of east point of or east part of west uh, east part of Mersey. There's, there's plenty to sort of use as kind of reference for uh, um, you know making sure that you're not you're not drifting and the anchor isn't actually um, bedded in but at the minute I think we are okay. Um, so next thing is to get the anchor ball up let everyone know that you are not moving.
so we're currently anchored here uh, obviously came round from uh, Marconi Sailing Club um, further up the Blackwater at OC Island uh, came down here this morning with the the ebb tide um, and we're just sort of sat here now waiting for the um, for, for the uh, flood to stop uh, uh, and then leave it high water and catch the, um, the ebb tide back round to Harwich um, this section of um, water here between the mainland and Gunfleet Sand, which is the bank about what we are, about sort of three miles offshore, four miles offshore, um, is um, known as the Wallet Channel. It's quite nasty. Um, it's shallow in most areas, navigable but shallow, um, and uh, in the wrong conditions, it can be pretty horrible to be honest um today is um gonna be a lumpy day for getting back round reasons b is we've got this northeasterly wind coming down it's a fresh five at the minute and um and then we've got a spring ebb coming uh, the other way so it's going to be quite lumpy in in this area um my plan is to um yeah cut across the uh, the colon bar here which we can at high water and just hug as close as we can sort of to the to the sort of um beach uh and tack in as we go along um and, and sort of maybe using some of the piers as uh you know kind of wind breakers if you like or sea breakers i think um when i came around the other day it wasn't actually too bad if we come quite you know close but obviously i was running downwind then so um I didn't really get a, an idea of what it was like coming back in wind. So, yeah, that's the plan for today. Um, leave off at two and hopefully get round for sort of in three or four hours. Um, obviously, I am tacking, so it's going to take a little longer. But with a good spring tide movement, we should do that in uh, in good time. So ETA back in um, uh, sort of up up the Orwell at around seven half seven um, this evening. much as I respect everyone's interests and don't usually cause too much of a bias that is really really irritating so the jet ski man has returned with a vengeance so uh, I am definitely going to head off uh, a bit earlier. I'm obviously on his anchor spot or something. Uh, wind has increased off to like an extra five knots, um, gusting no more than 22. So I'm just going to keep the one reef in the main for now. Um, and then see how we get on as we come out of the river. So uh, Cloud cover has increased something, um, like almost overcast, but it's, it's not quite there. Um, just off the coast, it is, uh, there's a few showers and stuff like that, it looks like, just over there. Um, but otherwise, quite quite nice and uh, quite blue uh, further offshore. So, um, yeah, um, still with a plan to head out and, and hug the coast. Obviously, we're only about an hour away from, or we'll be only about an hour away from uh, high water. So, uh, yeah, we won't have any issues with, uh, with crossing the Colm Bar. getting quite lively um, and I was having to spill a
So just approaching the naze now, uh, I think I've got to be able to round it on this tack. Uh, it's been bloody lumpy. Um, it's not so bad now, uh, but earlier I couldn't really get my camera out. It was just I was getting the, I was running the risk of it going overboard and stuff. So I really want to do that. Um, so it's about half five now. So I made good time. Um, not been cutting as close to the to the coast because there wasn't really any difference from the swell along along the coast along the beach even and uh, coming further out into the into the channel so yeah if we can make this um, if we can clear the shoals uh, off the naze point we should be able to go all the way up to um, the Harwich entrance on this tack. We'll see how we get on. Close hauled at the minute, have been all the way up really. Um, wind has dropped a little bit. Top top gusts were uh, 28, um, sort of just further off Fritton. And uh, yeah, she was going really well with the um, with the second reef in. I don't have a third reef. I don't think I would have put it in anyway. Um, because we are sort of like on the edge of kind of, you know, you know, under canvassing at the minute. As, as mad as it seems, it's um, if I reduce canvas any more, I'll just slowly come to a standstill. So I don't really want to do that. I want to be able to keep the speed up, um, but make it comfortable in this swell at the same time. So yeah, there's no, um, there's not a lot of weather helm on the tiller which is good but yeah almost constantly sort of 20 knots uh, the average has been about 21 I think with gusts up to sort of 24 and then the top gust was about 28 I think I saw the glimpse that it's not. So we're well rounded uh, the maze now, heading into uh, Harwich. The wind has eased slightly, so I've just furled a bit more of the Genoa out and uh, might shake off the um, the second reef in a little while. Um, yeah, that's uh, never too pleasant going up the wallet in those sort of conditions, but if you've got the tide with you. Um, and it is quarter past six now, so we haven't done too badly. Um, fighting the tide in the same conditions is, uh, yeah, you're you're losing the battle there right from the start. <laughs> I've tried it before. <laughs> 